Hey, what is up guys? So today I'm gonna be teaching you guys how I like to skin retouch and I do like to keep it very simple and minimalistic because I do not like to distort the model's natural beauty. I try to keep the model looking as natural as they possibly can, but I do get rid of small things such as blemishes and pimples using the healing brush in Photoshop. Next, what I like to do is emphasize the highlights and the shadows on the model's skin because this helps add dimension to your photo and not only that, but it also helps separate your subject from the background. Lastly, what I like to do is bring that photo back into Lightroom where I do this little skin retouching hack that I've learned that smoothens up the photo and brings it in together nicely. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the photo my friend Deja we're going to be using today. And here are also the effects in the group that we're going to be learning how to do. So let's go ahead and delete this. And the first thing you guys want to do is create a new layer. Once you've created this layer, go ahead and select the spot healing brush by clicking J and make sure that this box that says sample all layers is selected and may say current and below layers just depending on the photoshop that you guys have so what i tend to do with this tool is just get rid of the small pimples and blemishes on the model's face and then i work my way down to the rest of the skin So when I see a bigger blemish like this one on her thigh, I do make my brush size bigger so it starts to sample a bigger size and when I brush over it, it gets rid of that blemish easier. So now the rest of the leg looks pretty good so we're going to go ahead and move on to the second step. Once again, what you guys want to do is create a new layer but this time make sure you guys change the blending mode to overlay because this is going to help us create those highlights and shadows on the model skin. Next, you guys want to click on the brush tool and make sure you guys change the colors to white and black because the white is going to help emphasize the highlights and the black is going to help emphasize those shadows. Now make sure you guys change the flow to 1% and if you guys have it at 100% what you guys can do is click on this down arrow and make sure to scroll it all the way to the left and make it 1%. So what a low flow frequency brush allows you to do is if you brush over an area at first it is subtle but if you guys keep brushing over the area repeatedly it will get stronger and stronger. So be careful how often you guys brush back and forth because it'll give you too much of an extreme look and let's go ahead and do that just for demonstration. So you guys can see by brushing back and forth it does start to get a lot stronger and stronger. And the same concept applies to the shadow so let's go ahead and show you guys that as well by switching to the black brush and just brushing over a certain area. So now that we know the concept behind the low flow frequency brush and how it works, Let's go ahead and rename this layer 2 and name it highlights just to keep our workflow more organized. Now what I'm going to do is start brushing over the highlighted areas already created by the natural light and I'm going to help emphasize those a little bit more. So I do start by brushing along the nose and then I do work my way to the cheeks and I also like to brush over this area right on top of the lips where the highlights already created. We're going to go ahead and hit the forehead just a little bit. And I also really like to hit the lips because it adds a lot more dimension and I, I just like the look it gives. So I only go over the highlighted portion of the lips. And also her cheeks. And a little bit of the neck. So now that we get to the hands, I'm just going to continue and brush over the highlighted areas and I'll be coming back and emphasizing those shadows but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and emphasize those highlights. So now when I get to the legs, what I'm going to do is just make my brush size bigger and start brushing along those highlights as well. Next, let's go ahead and brush this part of the calf and let's also hit this part of the ankle. Now I'm going to go ahead and follow along the edge on this leg and start brushing those highlights as well. So this looks pretty good so let's go ahead and turn on and off this effect so you guys can see exactly what we did. So let's go ahead and create another new layer but this time we're going to name it shadows. So when it comes to the shadows what I like to do is start to brush over the shadow portion in the cheeks and also her jawline because it helps define it a lot more. And I also just realized I forgot to change the blending mode to overlay so if you guys forgot to go ahead and change that right now. And now I like to brush along the edges of her face and define those shadows as well. And I also hit the eyebrows. 
and then I like to define these parts in the nose just to give her more dimension and the edges once again just to get a little bit more so now I'm just gonna quickly turn on and off this layer so you guys can see exactly what we just did and the difference it does make okay so now let's continue and start hitting the shadow portion of the finger this time And now because her legs have a bigger portion of shadows, I'm going to go ahead and make my brush size bigger so I can define those shadows a lot faster and easier. So the shadow portion is looking pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Now I am noticing that her legs have a little bit too much red pigment so I'm going to go ahead and cool those down by creating a hue and saturation layer and then desaturating those reds. And because I only want it to affect her legs, what I am going to do is click on this white box right here and then click Command I. And now I'm going to brush over the legs with a white brush and change the opacity back to 100 if you haven't so you can get the full effect. And I'm not being very careful when I'm brushing those areas back into the legs just because there's not too many red tones to really be affected around there. So now let's turn this on and off so you guys can see exactly what we did. And to me it did make a big difference and I do like it how it settled down those reds. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a levels adjustment layer and I'm going to hold option and click it and then start dragging it to the left. Because this allows me to see the highlights and I do want to have at least one bright point in her skin. And I like how this looks so I'm going to go ahead and hit command I because I only want it to affect her skin. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the white brush and now I'm going to start brushing on her skin because that's the only part that I actually want this effect to take place in. So I'm going to go ahead and click the background layer because I'm going to try to do a more precise selection. So to use a selection tool you can click W or click this icon right here. And now I'm going to start brushing over the leg area that I wanted to select. But you guys can see that it did select some of the grass area so I'm going to go ahead and hold option and then start brushing over that area so it can deselect it. And although this isn't the cleanest and most precise selection right now, I am going to go ahead and click levels adjustment once again and start brushing it and I'm going to come back and clean it up. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit the slap mark on my keyboard and everything in red is what the effect is not hitting so I'm going to go ahead and start deselecting this with the black brush and this area right here too. So what I'm doing is zooming into the photo and then deselecting the things that I do not want the effect to take place in. Okay so now what I'm going to do is click the background layer once again and then this time I'm going to select the other leg. Now that my selection is done I'm going to go ahead and click the levels 1 adjustment layer once again and then just brush that effect in. Once again I'm going to go ahead and click the slant mark just so I can make a better selection and start brushing the areas that I do want it to take effect in and then also deselecting the areas that I do not want the effect to take place in. So if there's an area in the photo that you guys do not want the effect to take place in, go ahead and switch to the black brush and this will hide it if you start brushing over it. So now we are finished with the Photoshop portion and what I'm going to go ahead and do is group all these adjustment layers together and then unhide it and hide it so you guys can see exactly the effects we made. So now let's go ahead and take this into Lightroom. Now that we're in Lightroom, what we're going to go ahead and do is scroll down until you guys get to this details tool. If it's closed, go ahead and click that arrow just to open it up. So what I use is this luminance bar under noise reduction. What I do at first is zoom into the photo just so I know what I'm going to be editing when it comes to the skin. Then I start to slide that bar over until I see a point that I like. What this bar allows you to do is soften up the image and what I noticed it does as well is it smooths up the skin really nicely. So there's no specific number that I usually do land on, I just happen to like 30 and how it looks. But I have noticed that my range has been from 20 to 40 just depending on the image that I'm using. So now let's go ahead and work on the grain tool which allows us to add texture back into the skin after we have just smoothed it up with the luminance tool. And what I've noticed when I combine both the luminance tool and the grain tool is that it not only allows me to soften up the skin but it also allows me to throw texture back into it which is why I really like it. It's only a two step process and it's something that I've learned just through messing 
around and experimenting so I hope you guys do like this scary touching hack and now because I do soften up the photo I do like to go back into clarity and add a little bit more sharpness back into the image so what I am noticing is that the color temperature of this image is a little bit too orange for my own personal liking so I'm gonna go ahead and cool it down a little bit using this temperature tool I always tend to come back to Lightroom and just make my finishing adjustments to my photo so I'm gonna go ahead and speed that up so you guys don't have to sit through most of it and you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and always feel free to ask any questions you guys may have. You guys can ask me either on the comment section down below or on my direct message on Instagram and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I just want to say shout outs to Indonesia and Brazil for showing so much love and support. I really, really, really appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for watching once again and that's it for today's video and I hope you guys found it helpful. Alright, peace.